Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth episode of my podcast series Black Box. As you all know, in this podcast series I usually talk about contemporary music. But this time I would like to focus on music that is new, not in the sense that it was composed recently, but it is new because it is still undiscovered for the wider public. In a few weeks, I will be performing a concert at the annual meeting of the American Musicological Society in Philadelphia. The program will focus on the music that was composed at the time of Alban Berg's famous piano sonata, Opus 1. When I first started this project, I wanted to explore the unknown repertories of Viennese piano music from the turn of the century in order to have a better understanding of the compositional environment in which composers like Schoenberg and Youngberg were active. The more time I spent with these new repertories, the more I saw that this music, while having influenced the future composers at the time, was itself also influenced strongly by its past. Today I'm going to talk about such a piece, the Piano Sonata Op. 88 in D minor by Robert Fuchs. Robert Fuchs was one of the most influential figures in Viennese musical life. He was a professor at the Viennese Conservatory, where he taught many important composers such as Gustav Mahler, Hugo Wolf, and Alexander Zemlinsky, who later gave Arnold Schoenberg some private instruction on composition. But what makes Robert Fuchs an even more interesting figure is probably his close friendship with Johannes Brahms. Fuchs often sent his scores to Brahms for advice and suggestions, and Brahms spoke highly of Fuchs as a composer and helped him to get his music published. Fuchs thought of Brahms like a father figure whom he idolized and was strongly influenced by his music. It is then not surprising that their music sounds similar in many ways. Today, I want to show you one of these similarities that I found most interesting. In his Sonata Opus 88, Fuchs chooses a four-movement structure similar to the first and the second sonatas by Brahms. In the slow movement of his sonata, Fuchs uses a theme which sounds like this. Listen to the intermezzo in A major from Opus 118 by Brahms. I am sure you will already hear the similarity in the melodic line. on the very opening of these themes. Fuchs answers the opening figure with its logical conclusion. So the opening figure is this and the conclusion part is this. So in its entirety it sounds like Now, what Brahms does is, he opens up the phrase by employing a large leap between the last two notes, which results in an entirely different effect. 
So what he does with his main theme is this. When we reduce it, we hear So, the leap I'm talking about is this. So, instead of going down like this, Brahms goes up and he opens this main theme. And within the theme itself, it causes a bittersweet moment, which is sort of like a surprise for us. We often think that good composers delight us in their compositions by doing the unexpected in a miraculous way. Well, Brahms definitely succeeds in that. However, does choosing the logical conclusion make folks a less valuable composer? I would say no. Not at all. Brahms's theme may be more interesting in itself, but he actually does not develop it very much throughout the composition. Fuchs, on the other hand, employs a beautifully crafted variation each time he brings the theme back. The mastery of Fuchs lies thus not in the exciting construction of the theme itself, but rather in its dramatic development. Now I'm going to play for you one such variation. interesting to see how a simple difference of direction in the beginning of a motive can result in two entirely distinct compositions, isn't it? I will be playing the sonata at the AMS meeting in Philadelphia. The concert will take place on Saturday, November 14th at 12.15 p.m. and I hope that many of you will be able to come. If you happen to be there, please also do let me know what you think of these compositions. Oh, one more thing. If you would like to get my recording of Brahms' Opus 118, check it out on my website, www.sedarader.com. Thanks for listening to Black Box, and as always, please don't hesitate to contact me with questions or leave a comment on my website. Take care. Bye.